talked about gravity. And here's, say, a sun and a planet. And obviously not to scale properly, but here is what an orbit of a planet would look like. It's oblong. Now, none of them are quite as erratic as this in our solar system. There may be places where there's things like this with all the billions of stars that there are. But as you can see, it gets slower when it's further away, the planet, and it gets much faster as it circles close by the sun. And if you'll notice, the sun itself is moving. In other words, they're both rotating around a central point. Okay, here we have two objects that are sitting still in space. They just appeared. And if you'll notice, they're going to fall straight towards one another. I have the tracer lying on so you can see how absolutely straight that they go towards one another. And as they head towards one another, you'll notice they pick up speed because the gravity gets stronger the closer they get to one another. sudden it's one big star if you will okay here we've got the same two objects again only this time this one is still allowed freedom with no motion and this one here is allowed freedom but it's been given a motion in this direction now let's see what happens Notice that they now circle one another. They didn't collide. Now you're going to see an interesting pattern of each planet's motion. But note that they're always entangled by the gravity between the two. And because we're going to see these same two objects set up the same way in the next segment, but we're going to add a third. Notice how these orbits are with points on them. The next set will be somewhat different with the third object. I've changed nothing in this one, except here we have a small little asteroid, let's say, that's going to head this direction. This one is going to be free to fall this way. This one has been given motion that way. Same as before. Now let's see what happened with this third object. Notice the first two act as they did in the last segment. And the little small asteroid is heading towards the other two and you'll see it almost hit one of them and that will throw it out into space and the other two now remember before they had a very pointed orbit on one of them and now you can see the two are orbiting in a totally different kind of dance and going in a different kind of direction in fact, their orbit almost makes the pattern of a bunch of hearts. And they'll go that way forever. Until another object comes by. Now here we have three objects. Let's pretend that's the sun. And that would be the earth. And that one would be the moon. And as you see, the earth is going around the sun. The moon is going around the earth. And that happens about 13 times every year. But wait, let's see what kind of a funny looking trace the moon is making as it goes around the sun. Now let's add some tracer lines to the earth and the moon and see what happens. See what their orbits really look like. As you can see, the moon and the earth don't go in perfect circles. The moon 
almost looks like it stops once in a while. And the Earth's orbit is obviously not a perfect circle. You can see it kind of almost a little bit straighter, and then it moves here and bends. You can see that both affect one another, and the sun affects them both. And that's how the earth goes around the sun, and the moon goes around the earth. And now we're just about approaching a half a year. Have you ever wondered what it would be like you could drill a hole through the center of the earth and jump in that hole. What would happen to you? Well, let's pretend this is you and here's the hole through the center of the earth. And now we are going to jump into that hole. And there we jumped. We gained speed to the center and then we slowed back down. Stop and head back towards the center again at speed and then slow down, stop, and back again. Now why is this? This is because gravity collects at the center of objects, in this case the center of the Earth. Now, we really couldn't do this because you can't drill a hole through the Earth because the center of the Earth is liquid iron. But even if you could, there would be air in there and you know how it is when you put your hand out the window in a car and how that air pushes against your hand? Well, as you fell through the earth, the air would slow you down. And so consequently, you wouldn't have enough energy when you got to the center to carry you on all the way to the other side of the earth. So you really can't do this. But if you were in a vacuum and you could drill a hole through the center of the earth, then this is what it would look like and what would happen to you. You'd go back and forth forever. Okay, now I'm going to show you how a rocket ship must fly in space. Notice, in order to stop, I have to turn the rocket ship around. power, I just about stop. I'm going to go this way, a little faster. Now, do you see what's happening? I'm not very good, am I? But you can see that you can't fly imperfectly, or you can only fly in straight lines. I want to go this way now. See, I went sideways. I didn't go the way I was pointed. You have to stop that motion, then go somewhere else. It's not easy. That's why you have to decide where you're going to go before you leave. So it's not like Star Wars at all in reality. There's a whole lot of asteroids out there. Can get you in a whole lot of trouble.